In this video, we're going to go over the Lab 5 class data analysis sheet. So, we got some class data questions to do. We're going to calculate uh, first some means and standard deviations of variables. So, let's go ahead and do that. It's called average, at least in Excel. Just do the, whoops, do the average. And then we'll do this standard STB, EB. And we have a sample, so we're going to do standard deviation of the sample. Awesome, I'm going to lower those numbers, just to two digits will work. Then we're just going to go across. And uh, one of the things later is we're not going to need the standard deviation of the absolute errors. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. We're only going to be looking at the means, later on at least and just make it look a little prettier, a little center it all. All right, so you could just go ahead and copy and paste. Well, actually do it all at once. Both standard deviation and that. So just merge table. Whoops, that, that was strange. Which one is it? Overwrite cells, there we go. Make sure you do overwrite cells, and then we can fix that on up at, on the back end, the uh, the look, because it got rid of all the bars, so to speak. Cool. And let's fix this on up. Borders. Let's give all borders. And there we go. Lickety split. It's also up here if we wanted to it. We just have to make sure we have the cells highlighted that we're going to be doing that with. From here, uh, we now are asked to make a box and whisker plot. Uh, for this one, and that's going to be of the kinetic energy, we do not include the means and standard deviations in this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to copy this. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do it with the how everything's set up here. It would be great if we could. But uh, squat jump, KE, I'm just going to use that for short. Um, this is this squat jump. Actually, sorry, this is just going to be called kinetic energy. And then I'm going to pull the one from the counter movement jump, again not including the mean and standard deviation. Paste. And this one was the CMJ, counter movement jump. Oops. Just missed that. And we got one more for the drop jump. Again, don't include that. DJ. Alright, so we'll go ahead and do insert. This one's under statistics. There we go. Um, let's see, the numbers start a little bit above 100, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a um, slight change on that, at least for mine. If yours doesn't look like this, don't do this. Um, but just go with where it starts. Um, hmm, interesting, it didn't didn't have a top tail on mine at least. Um, that's okay. I guess everything's just sort of concentrated right in one area. Um, but we have our box and whiskers, we have our um, kinetic energy over here, so just make sure you title that and then title it here, uh, sorry for the axis and then also the title for the jumping condition so to speak. And we have our jumping conditions, we can see that clearly here. Now, we have a couple hypotheses that you'll have to talk about. Our first thing we're going to do, though, is an ANOVA single factor. For this, we're going to have to move these into a smaller, or to a more organized, so to speak, column. That, and this is kind of what I was about to do before. Um, squat jump, kinetic energy. 
this will be CMJ kinetic energy and drop jump kinetic energy. Again, not including those um, averages or standard deviations. Great, so we got our, our uh, numbers here. What we're going to do is insert, sorry, data, data analysis, and the one we're looking for, NOVA single factor, is right here at the top. Input range, and this is one of the reasons why I said we can't use the uh, things because it uh, has no way of distinguishing um, or s hitting separate ones. I'm going to um, give this a name. I'm going to call it the ANOVA ones because it'll create a tab down here for me and it'll make it easier to look at. Awesome. Cool. So. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm just going to show it um, here. We'll increase the number of values. So that's a pretty small value, and we can, at least on mine, I can safely reject that. Uh, we have the F statistic and the p-value that we need from there for here, and then we need to you know, do a small write-up about that. Now we come to another part. We're going to go back to our original sheet where we're going to do some t-test to sample um, assuming equal variances now we got three comparisons so that ANOVA was just is there a difference somewhere between these three or are they all the same so to speak now we're gonna be doing what we typically call like a pairwise comparison so we're gonna do SJ to DJ SJ to CMJ and DJ to CMJ to look at each of those individual differences. One of the things that we have to keep in mind though is, and I have it here, you may have noticed it, uh, the p-value is going to be what we call corrected, corrected from multiple comparisons and the one we're using is the Bonferroni. Um, there are many, I don't recommend typically using this one uh, just because it is not as powerful and it's less conservative is what they call it. Um, but uh, it's the easiest one to work with in Excel. All the other ones you have to do a whole bunch of stuff, so I'm just like, we'll avoid that. So to do this, it's uh, 0 0.05, which is our regular p, uh, which is our regular alpha level. We're going to divide it by the number of comparisons that we're interested in, and we're going to be or going to be making. We're making three, so we're going to do 0 0.05 divided by three. And this is our corrected value, and we'll use this as our sort of p p uh, our alpha level for rejection or not. Now we're going to go ahead and do those comparisons. Our first one up is SJ to DJ. Let's go to data data analysis. Scroll down. Equal variances. Our input range. DJ, and then oops SJ. Hypothesize difference zero, and we'll set the alpha level at zero one six 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 six. Uh, I'm not sure how long we could put those in, but that's enough numbers. S S J to D J. Cool, we got that naming down there. All right, this is looking good. Uh, this would be safely re be able to be rejected. We can always double check just in case um, by expanding this number out. So that's definitely less than 0 0.0166. That is definitely less than. Two tails, the one we're interested in, not the one tail. And then uh, we'll also do a what's called a Cohen's D. I believe we've done one already, but uh, just a refresher. It's going to be the absolute value of the mean differences, differences of means, divided by the square root of the pooled variance. Square root of the pooled variance is um, pooled standard deviation. Okay, so we have that uh, in your PowerPoint, we have that 
uh, interpretation, but this is a pretty large difference. So pretty good between drop jump and squat jump. Next, we're going to do a comparison for counter movement jump and drop jump. I'm getting confused with my tabs. Same thing, we already have the drop jump in here. We just need to change this to counter movement jump. Same, same. Let's change this to CMJ. Got that down here, excellent. And this one looks like we cannot reject it. That's pretty large. We will still do the Cohen's D. One of the nice things we'll do though is we're at D8. We'll go ahead and copy that, paste it here. And it's doing everything we need to do. Means standard, uh, the, the variance to get uh, pulled standard deviation that we need. Excellent. And lastly, so we'll keep the CMJ and we need to change this one to the squat jump. Squat jump and CMJ. Order doesn't matter. If I were to reverse these, it wouldn't matter. I just need to make sure I have the correct ones up. So squat jump, CMJ, perfect. And this one is, again, less than that 0.00, oh, sorry, 0 0.0166. So excellent, even better. Again, D8 for me. D8, paste. That's just a regular paste, not a... Um, paste based on the uh, like values or anything like that pointing to the right things and that's again pretty large between the SJ and CMJ so it looks like CMJ to DJ wasn't you know, that different it, was a, it looks like there's a little bit of an increase in the mean but uh, the variance is still pretty large the biggest increase was from SJ to CMJ so just doing that dip, dip to jump, we got a pretty, pretty good increase, uh, at least based on this data. May not look like that in your data, but that's based on my data at least. And then DJ to SJ, DJ was higher, so had a pretty large increase as well. Anyways, uh, go ahead and make sure you get that information into here. Um, oh, looks like I accidentally had an extra column in here. Um, so, that will conclude everything. If you do have any questions, though, please contact your lab instructor or myself. Make sure you do save this and uh, turn it in with your completed worksheet. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.